guys. I... There you go. <laughs> there we go. All right. There so we're we go. Squeeze around All right. There All we right. go. Okay. Okay. Now we're official. Now we're official. Can we get in here? There we go. Mm -hmm. It's okay. They don't. They don't have to see me. I'm sweaty. So. <laughs> um. Hey, okay. Kevin. Hey, this Kevin. Okay. So the, I sent I sent you that video with the with that doorbell. I want. She was supposed to be sending me a longer video uh -huh. okay. about it, but this dog just goes nuts at the doorbell. Like I try. I tried basic things. Like they even had a praising tree with the remote. Is like door try to do, yeah. you know, like the remote the remote treater. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I try experimenting with her. Yeah. But I see this body language. The the video had like a short snippet of it, like with that part uh -huh. that goes up, and you know, even with like when she wasn't barking, she was still aroused. Yeah. So it was just like ah. Oh, so what did I, she do? What did she do when people come in? Like she the window is really low, right next to the door, so she'll see that she'll bark. Uh huh. She'll get intense. When is the knocking is not as intense at the door. It's just the doorbell that's a really big trigger. So one of my questions was, is that something I gotta keep working on conditioning? Or is that something like management like, okay, maybe just not do the, have people turn the doorbell, use the doorbell with this high level. What's that? My opinion would be, I don't like, if you if you can fix the problem, fix it. Don't don't try to hide it forever. So okay. I feel like by having people not use the doorbell, you're not fixing it. You're yeah. just preventing it. Somebody's gonna come in right now. Right. So. right. so for her state of mind, I think it is super healthy to help her overcome it. Um, there's probably a ton of different ways to get there. Mm -hmm. But m for me, when you talk about arousal, it's that dopamine release, right? Like yeah. Most dogs crave that, and she has her triggers, which clearly is the doorbell, because yeah. it's not as much with the actual door. So um, I know Mark didn't cover a lot of this, but Casey Cover's uh, perception modification are probably Mark's class, because his is more geared towards dog trainers. Mm -hmm. um, that perception modification took me, I've been training dogs for what, six years before I did her her, her, her course, and I had a pit bull that um, was super, like high anxiety. So yeah. like every, every day for, for breakfast and dinner, he would drive me insane because he would be like, <laughs> and we As tried, we're out the food we've, and we've tried like waiting like an hour. He does it the whole time and I have, kids and I have other dogs and I'm like I can't do this all day how do I fix this and we've tried you know telling him to calm down or that's enough and nothing worked until we took him from that perception modification of showing him what relaxed looks like mm -hmm. and then what alert looks like and giving him that if then statement of if you want to go eat your dinner I need you to be easy mm -hmm. right now you're we said his mouth or his I don't know if we said mouth or voice. Voice, your voice your voice is being very alert right now and I need your voice to be easy and he went from <laughs> to the first time of going <laughs> and then I could release them to go eat. Okay. So that's my my go to solution now for dogs like that that tend to get more aroused with the the more excitement that's thrown at them, the more they just get hi more hyper. Yeah. So Okay. I, I, how what else what other problems is she having with the dog? Like okay, so she likes to when guests come over or when she's behind them, she throws like that ankle, that ankle nip, mm -hmm. ankle nipping. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw that the first day, like mm -hmm. the consult, and uh, some dog, some dog reactivity, and you know she just she barks up a storm whenever someone comes in, and the solution for them was like put her in a crate, and she just be barking the whole time. Mm -hmm. And the uh, other problem is their name. Their neighbor lives right next door, and they her kids play with her kids, so they'll run into the one door because there are two doors to get into the house. Uh -huh. So yeah. there's just like unpredictability. Right. Yeah. So just keep yumping up. The and then she's just it's just like bark when whoever because they're she's fine once they come in, but once they go out and they come back in, she's like bark 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 bark, mm -hmm. okay. and you know she's very visual and mm -hmm. um, oh god what a, what else she she was a She's a really sweet dog, but, you know, she's just a big... Can she see out the front windows? There's curtain, but she can just... She can but see. she's so, still... First thing I would recommend is blocking those off somehow. I have 
the blinds that lower from the top. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can still have light come in from yeah. the top because I don't want my whole windows black. Yeah. Uh, those are kind of expensive, so I recommend people get like maybe you can buy like craft paper. Craft paper. Or just tape it I to mean, the window. cardboard, you know, whatever. If it's just a temporary. Tape it to the window because as long as the dog can get away with the behavior when people aren't watching her, it's just amping her up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and I had some clients that are like, can we just take it off an inch at a time? And I'm like, well, no, not unless you're going to supervise your dog 24-7 at the windows. Yeah. So, I mean, I keep my lower half of my windows just blocked. Yeah. You know, and that, that actually has helped a couple dogs that I've okay. had a lot. Um, of course, overall, you know, relationships so the dog trusts her. Mm -hmm. it's interest well it's interesting because when she goes to answer the door she goes who is it and the dog goes woof, woof. yeah so have the owner watch their verbal their energy their verbal yeah views, she, basically the dog you, thinks she's probably barking with her I don't know but yeah I, so yeah watch that um, typically I bring a dog to the door with me on leash mm-hmm and um, before I open the door, they're calm. And I put a note on the outside of the door if I have to, or I'll open it. You know, like, hey, give me a minute. I'm getting my dogs on leash. Uh, workmen appreciate that because yeah. they don't like it. It's safer leash. for them. Yes, yeah, <laughs> they've been bit before, and, yeah. you know, they feel better. And they're like, great. Can yeah, you yeah. Yeah. Right? And, of course, you know, I can't supervise. I have a couple dogs that would surround the visitors with right. love. Right. And, um, you know, so I'm, I work with one dog yeah. at a time. And they're on leash, I calm them down, have them sit, I open the door, I take a step back, I invite the person in, mm -hmm. and I say, please go in the kitchen or wherever, and I follow them in, and the dog's calm following me. Um, and then I put the dog either on a bed or in the crate. The dog's okay. calm when I do that. Okay. If I want to have the dog out with me, for whatever reason, then they're out with me. Yeah. You know, but if it's workmen, I'm not, I, I want to pay attention to the workmen, mm -hmm. not the dog, so I get that initial calmness, let the dog know I'm inviting these people in the house, and then I put the dog in yeah. the Yeah, okay. So, but, um, all I mean, good, the all hackles good stuff. is all kind of an uh, insecurity. How long has she had the dog? They they had it since she was, she was, a, she was a pup. And uh, they they lived in SoCal, SoCal before, and then moved up here. Okay. And she started she started like a I think a year ago or a year and a half. And they did have a trainer, but okay. it wasn't successful. How long was the puppy with the mother? Do you know? I don't know. That that's that's another good question. I have to ask that. I ask a lot of questions to my clients to try and figure out like. I mean, in a way, it kind of doesn't matter because you're dealing with the dog you have at hand, but but I'm just curious sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they tell you things in the midst of asking those questions that actually will be helpful. Yeah. You know? Um, no, that's not good because I got... I mean, I've done, you know, I've done with my own dogs <laughs> before I started training dogs. I had issues with my own dogs at yeah. the doorbell. It was a huge problem. Yeah. Um, and actually, my dogs were fine with the neighborhood kids because they grew up with them. So mm -hmm. that wasn't an issue. She's got, if there's kids going in and out of the home like that, the mm -hmm. dog can't be allowed to participate at all. In those activities. In those activities of guarding or herding, I mean, whatever, controlling yeah. Yeah, yeah. that situation. Mm -hmm. So the dog needs to be in a crate during those hours mm -hmm. and in the back part of the house, not... Yeah. You know, like in a quiet area. That's what I say, because her creek's literally right there by the living room, yeah, and they're just not running. Right. It's yeah. not a relaxing really, place. Yeah. There's no That's place That's not for good for rats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They said, like, they tried it in the room, but she'll just bark, so I assume it's just, like, just waiting her out to she. That sounds like, depending, I mean, it could be a lot of things, but it could just be that initial demanding behavior of, like, mm -hmm. hey, you can't leave me in here. Yeah. I didn't yeah. say you could leave me. Right. Yeah. And so waiting it out, as yeah. painful as that can be sometimes. Um, might yeah. just be the easiest, yeah. the most, I shouldn't say easiest, simplest solution. Simple doesn't yeah. always mean easy. Yeah. The simplest. For Where sure. if you change the relationship before you yes. put the dog in the crate, mm -hmm. they're not right. going to protest as much mm -hmm. usually. Yeah. Yes.
However, if you're the trainer and you're present when that happens, I always tell the client, be prepared when I leave, the dog's going to push you right. and test you again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just be prepared for it. And yeah, I mean, I would put her, because also if she's allowed to be in that front room, she's put in a position of guarding the house mm -hmm. because she's in that oh. area. Like that's her main Yeah, room. that's her territory right there. Yeah. So if you put her in a back bedroom, she's not given that uh, job to the do. Job. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's not on purpose by the owners, but to the dog, it, it might mm -hmm. be an obvious. And that's a great assignment. point for people like me that are, are very like type A personalities, like to go, go, go. Mm -hmm. When I'm put into a situation where I have nothing to do, it's really hard to shut down because mm -hmm. I don't practice it as much as I need to. Mm -hmm. So for her, being a dog that's always been go, 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 yeah. it is going to be hard to learn how to shut down and stop controlling everything. Just let that mind rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does um, does the dog know place? We're working on it. Mm -hmm. Very pretty responsive. She's really smart. Yeah. So like uh, we condition her plus add some fixed space with Heather, just like whenever the kids come in, place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they, the kids are, these are the nicest kids I have ever met. <laughs> like I ask them, run around the kid while on place and then. Run around the dog. Yeah, run around the dog. Right. And yeah. then do jumping jacks. Exactly. Yeah, be the best distraction yeah. ever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's something that. Do what you do. <laughs> I'm going to work the dog. Yeah. Yeah. That's and something I that, that I do a lot to get dogs acclimated to the ideas of kids being crazy. Yeah. Because a lot of our clients are young families with young, young kids. kids. We've yeah. got young kids. So the, the place command I've just found mm -hmm. is like the easiest thing. You just put the dog on a place, something that they know. They can still move around. They can play with the toy. But they can clearly make the choice to be on or be off of this. Yeah. You can have the kids doing all that crazy stuff. So. The, and I think the, the crazier the, the kids can be when the dogs just chill mm -hmm. on the place. So the dogs will go through phases where they're on their place and they're doing that. You know, at first they're going to test it immediately. Yeah. Kids run, ooh, I'm going to go. And then they'll, the kids will run and they'll, they won't get off, but they're just like, ah. Yeah. But once they get to the point where they can just chill and ideally just lay down and chew on a bone or whatever, then you can intensify what the kids are doing now we're throwing balls and we're like spilling human food on the floor and all this stuff <laughs> so that then then when the kids exposed to those same things not on a place the dog. they've been oh, they've <laughs> the been dog, just dog kids, kids, the kids not kids. on place. one of the same our, no our kids are on place the dog yeah. uh, but then like they can literally be just a couple feet away from that and not they've already lived a lot with that exposure and that stimulus mm -hmm. so right out to stay calm. trying right. to control it and trying to it's nip. like old news it's boring like yeah. been there done that yeah so yeah cool yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. i used to uh have my kids dress up in strange looking clothes yeah. and go out and ring the doorbell mm -hmm. because dogs when people come in they can't smell them mm -hmm. and so they didn't realize it was my kids yeah sort of i mean they did shortly once they right. smell them <laughs> And so I'd have, you know, I'd practice the doorbell. I did have my dogs trained where when the doorbell rang, they'd go on place automatically. Yeah. I haven't kept that up, so. That's what we said. Yeah. Owner. Um, but that took a while. Yeah. You know, you can't just start out doing that. But it was, that was, I think, a conditioned response. Yeah. 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 Because, because if that's your trigger, you hear the doorbell, you say place, the dog's going to go. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you just phase out the word place, they hear the doorbell, they go. Correct. Yeah. And it just changed them from barking to plates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got a yeah. new job. Yeah. And, and I would say, too, uh, something that Casey Cover talks about is just like, and uh, Mark telling the dogs what's going to happen. Because a lot of times you, you know that the doorbell's going to ring. You see somebody walk through the window or you hear the UPS truck. So before somebody comes up and rings the bell, because our dogs even sometimes when the bell rings, they're like, oh! It just startles them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, it's cool. And then they're done. But if I see somebody walking, I'll say, Morgan, the UPS guy's here. He's going to ring the doorbell. And then she's already kind of ready for it. And then when it happens, it's, it, I don't think you, they peak. Their, mm -hmm. their excitement doesn't peak so much as just like, oh, the doorbell rang. So I think that kind of just takes a little okay. edge off the. Yeah, because I think, because I figured like predictability might help because, right. yeah. like, I. Like I was saying, like if the kids can let you know 
that they are coming that they're coming in yeah. that might be helpful. Oh, set the kids outside yeah, with yeah. the timer. Every two yeah. minutes, guys, just bang on the door. I'm not even going to answer it. Just bang on the door, and then go away, and then come back. And yeah. we've done that with certain dogs, depending on how it amps them up. But um, I've had a lot of success with just the dogs. Like they start barking, and I don't care because I know I'm not answering the door. All of my attention's on them, and I'm like, no, you need to sit. And they're like, but somebody's at the door. Somebody's at the door. You got to go. And I said, no, you got to sit first. And it's funny to see those gears start turning when they're like. But you don't care because normally somebody's at the door and you're like, I better get to that door before to before that person door. leaves, you right. know. And the dog knows they take advantage of that moment when you're vulnerable. When you, you switch that vulnerability to a strength and say, No, I know somebody's at the door and I need you to sit first. They're like, But, 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 until it's like, Okay, so you still want me to listen when there's people at the door. Okay. Okay, um, yeah. So that's, another, I mean, there's so many different ways um, to get the same results. It's just which path works for that personality of dog yeah. and the family, because sometimes families can be kind of complex too. That's why Facebook Live. <laughs> well, and it's it's super important that she not leave the dog out when mm -hmm. she can't work with it mm -hmm. and this is going on. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, because point. if the dog gets away with the behavior mm -hmm. even once, it's gonna set her back. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as this is the hardest thing for owners, you know, it's just, but then she's in the crate for three hours every afternoon. Or you can have her out with you for 20 minutes and train her while this is going on and then put her in the crate. Or That's what I say, because she has, she's a mom and then like she, she's very sweet, mm -hmm. she's very considerate of others, yeah. just like me, we're figuring out all this, but uh, <laughs> but it was just like, yeah, if you focus with her, like you put her on a place or you, she's with you and then if, let's say, you're cooking or doing life stuff, yes. just yeah. put her away. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and she can move the place around the house. Yeah. Yep. So, because, you know, when my kids were smaller and I was working with dogs, I'd moved the place in the kitchen and yep. I had a, um, I have a carabiner clip and yep. screwed into the wall mm. and I hooked the leash to that. And so if I do miss that opportunity, at least the dog can't take off. Right. But yeah, I'd bring the dog in while I'm mm -hmm. fixing dinner or whatever. I'd okay. train place then. And don't think of the crate as a punishment or a timeout. No. The crate is her sanctuary. Yeah. She may not know it yet. But she <laughs> will appreciate it when she finally finds that true yeah. rest. Yeah. And that's where I think some people feel guilty about it. And then yeah. that guilt transfers to the dog. And you're like, but I think you don't want me to go in there, so I'm going to throw a tantrum. Right. So it is a safe, calm place that 99.9% of dogs that I've worked with truly love once they realize what the crepe means. Yeah. 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 And then, like, uh, I don't know. Back, back to the doorbell. What do you guys think about that? Because she just gets in the high stage, is, is, is it the pool? Because it will just, either my timing really sucks or it's just like, doorbell, treat, doorbell, treat, and then she'll bar, then she'll bar. I know it's like either rouse, I don't want to give food at that time. Yeah, probably, I, I, I probably wouldn't go that route, but that's just me personally. Right. I, I would try to um, do some building up to the doorbell. Um, so like Eric was mentioning, the more wins you have under your belt, before you throw that huge trigger at them, the more successful you're gonna be at overcoming it. Mm -hmm. Small victories win the battle, right. not the big battle. You have to have lots of practice yeah. first. And this is something where I might use the transitional leash. Yes. And you can either, you can stand there at the front door with the door open and ring the doorbell yeah. yourself mm -hmm. to start the process. Mm -hmm. and, and even just using that name and calling, explain. you know, the okay. whole time. And then again, that would be like, I don't know, a few minutes usually, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you have someone else ring the doorbell from outside. It, the thing about this is you have to have a partner usually, yes. but I have, have recorded kids. Yeah, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Have recorded my own doorbell mm -hmm. on my phone. Mm -hmm. And that's and a great way to start that. because okay. you can turn the volume down yes. yeah, and yeah. get louder and oh, louder okay. and louder yeah. until it's the full house doorbell. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, but I'll just sit there. Ding, 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 yeah. ding. Yeah. You know, yeah, she very annoying. The transitional <laughs> leashes. Loves it. She, we're, we're still going through it. She wants it. She's asking me like, is it forever? It's like, no. you know. So here's the thing with that too, yeah. because we get that all. When can I take the leash off? Why do you want to? Yeah. Why are you in such a rush? And I think it's important for the owners. So this is something we've been thinking about and why does it matter so much? Because I have a dog that I've had her eight years. She's on a leash when someone comes over to the house. She just is. So I think either they feel bad because the dog has a leash on somehow or they it's an ego 
thing. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I'm not sure. Maybe they're they'd have to explain it to the visitors. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it just you know it just has to stay on the dog until yeah. you can control the dog with the leash on. Mm -hmm. You cannot take it off. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just admit. It. Yeah, but it, we can talk safety, a long you know? time. I know, and that. I have, and you guys can't you have to but, sleep, so it's just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we use tools to accomplish ev everything that that we we do in some way, shape, or form. So to have, if you have a tool that is working, it's getting you the results that you're looking for. Like, I wouldn't be in a big rush to do without it. Now, that's not to mm -hmm. say that you're gonna that that your dog will never be compliant and not have an issue with the doorbell or chasing kids and they're going to always have to have this on but uh, dogs all learn at different paces and that's so very humans. it's very dependent yeah. on how consistent the human is yeah. too uh, so I think that yeah we shouldn't be trying to get rid of the, the tool whatever that is that's working in a hurry no but, it's but like I, I, I do agree it's in, in some way uh, like like I an ego more... thing like people just People just want to be able to have a dog that's off leash and that just listens to their verbal commands. And I think yeah. that's, here's Devil's Advocate. I think too though, not necessarily ego, but the normalcy of mm -hmm. what is dog ownership look like. And most people don't have their dogs on the leash, True. so why yeah. should I yeah. have to? And so, so normalizing that, that there's nothing wrong with it. And we're professional dog trainers, and our dogs still have remote trainers or leashes on when we have company, mm -hmm. or they're in their room, because I just don't want to deal with having to watch my dogs and company at the same time mm -hmm. sometimes. And that's okay. So okay. just knowing that it's just yeah, no, it's I, not abnormal. There's nothing wrong with it, and 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 I think too, uh, there's going to be a period of time before you get rid of the tool that it's there and you're not using yes. it. Yeah, and don't take it off too soon. That's and think you're so done. huge. Because like Crystal <laughs> said, like sneaky moment. If we go out in public, our dogs always have any color on. Mm -hmm. Do we use it all the time? Probably not always. Hardly ever. Not always. But, but it's sometimes there for that because one time. Yeah. If I'm changing the oil, I want an oil pan. If I'm installing a mirror on the wall like I probably want a screwdriver or a nail like if you don't have that tool when you need it you you can't effectively do the job mm -hmm. in that moment and let's use this analogy they say that dogs have the average IQ of a toddler do you go out into public walking downtown without holding your toddler's hand no way right that's a huge risk like you, you could but it's a <laughs> huge risk right I mean and that's not a cool to me that's not a cool that doesn't mean you're a cool parent yeah right? there's responsibilities that come with with owning a child with having a child and with owning a dog. So all things that I do not know. <laughs> but you understand yes. because you're human and there's that generalization that even people, we've, we've had families that don't have kids yet. Yeah. And they may not ever have kids and that's okay, but the general, the general, say the word please. Generality. Thank you. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is why I need and, somebody else in my family. And, and this is like the same, I mean this principle applies like so much of like when we talk to our clients about dogs, like we relate it to kids because we have kids and people even if you've not had kids with. you've seen kids yeah. be raised and and you can just make sense you of that you were a what kid. doesn't work it's like the same principle with having puppies like you don't just you don't just have a baby and set it in your house and leave See ya. and then good luck freak out and be confused when like there's puke and things oh that they that have been eaten and Should things ripped off the wall when you come back like You've got to. That's not how we raise our kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it's like right here too. But like, people don't do that. Right. People don't do that, but they do it with their puppies. Yeah. And they're uh -huh. confused why there's accidents in the house and there's destructive behavior mm -hmm. and and like, well, you don't just leave a baby unattended. unattended. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, try to think about it in like the toddler equivalent when when we're thinking about our yeah. dogs because so much is transferable. Yeah. And people can make sense of. Well, how would you treat your baby right your toddler. or your toddler but when we think about dogs like people don't really make that correlation okay right okay cool what other questions uh this one's for you especially since you're fearful of people really? since you're i fearful. am fearful fearful of people <laughs> apparently <laughs> i did not no. mean it that way no way she specializes in it. Hurt you? I told him I've been socialized since I've been young. She I've has. Over it. She's having a fear period. <laughs> okay, All so, right. like, um, so, so like I get dogs and then you guys too, like that are worried about people. And you know how people like to reach over, like 
they go towards the dog and the dog's like, oh, Oh shit, oh shit, mm-hmm. oh shit. That's what I tell owners when dogs are barking. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, right. translation. Um, so there's like this sort of this uh, setup exercise that I tell people, like my clients, hey, if, if someone wants to, if you can get a friend or a neighbor to like outside and just have them just be still and mm-hmm. not interact with the dog, no eye contact. And then, like, I'll have the dog, if it's, like, I tell them have the dog calm down a little bit first, and then have, and just, like, slowly walk up to the person, and, and sometimes, like, I'll lure with, like, a little bit of food, or just, like, walk up, and just let them sniff, and then, Mm -hmm. after that, like, walk, walk away, so I wanted to ask, like, is that, a, val- a valid way of doing getting them around people because like you know people want to always want to greet dogs and I say either it's your way like your rules because you want to set structure for the dog mm-hmm. so they trust you or like you know 80% dog lovers who don't listen it's like yeah go get bit by that dog over there not this one right you know so it's just like yeah what I want to ask your opinion like what are some exercises like be around people or... um I mean my neighbors are awesome and they know what I do Mm -hmm. so it's he's my neighbors are used to me just you know we just come up and I'm like hey can I bring you know Lucy up to hang out with you and they're like yeah and we chat about whatever and then we leave and it might depend where the dog is what I yeah the state of mind do right well like like Chardonnay right I've had her a year now actually I got her a year before uh, two days before a conference last year. So when I first oh. got her, she was really terrified of people in the neighborhood, but very friendly at the adoption events. Mm. And I was like, well, this is so strange, yeah. right? Uh, and then someone suggested it was habit because she used to escape from the yard and probably people would try and grab her, right? And, and so that made sense. And it took months, mm. you know, of just going up to people just hanging out. I don't require a sit Mm -hmm. or anything at that time unless I have a dog that's like like too jumpy. Um, I just let her kind of hang out and there's people who she seemed to like more than others and Mm -hmm. I don't really know why and so if she seemed to like them I'd be like well just squat down and see if she comes up to you. Yeah. You know and if she does then give her a little scratch under here and so I instruct them the whole way through the process, uh-huh. but I know these are people that are gonna that you trust, that I trust, and that are gonna do what I say. So my neighbor actually did a really cool thing with Chardonnay. She was afraid of plastic bags, and so uh, her husband came out of the house holding a plastic bag, and Chardonnay already liked the lady, uh-huh. and so the lady went up and went, "He's okay, like this, holding the plastic bag," and. She like formed a bridge for yeah. my dog, oh. and I didn't have to tell her to do that. Oh, huh. so my neighbor. It's cool. It's cool. That you're is making, awesome. You're making dog trains. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, the food. Yes, I I use it, but it's important they don't reach their hand out. To right. The dog. Right. Um, I usually like have them like toss it near them or like uh, or. Um. I usually don't, mm-hmm. but I'm not saying it wouldn't work. Okay. It's just not something I. Oh no, this do. is good. This is good. I like to hear um, thoughts and stuff. Usually, I'll just have them hold it while well, I'm sitting, but in their hand down by their side, and just open their hand, and okay. that's it. And I always tell them ahead of time: do not try to touch the dog yes. after yeah. they take the food, yeah. because people think any dog coming up to them is an invitation to be yeah. touched. Yes, yeah. not. So, you know, but at the end of the day, like, no one has to touch your dog. Mm-hmm. And I'm very proactive I, about yeah, that. I, yeah, 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 I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. I'm just I saying. make friends in my neighborhood by <laughs> telling people not to touch my dog. Yeah. But, and I think, know. too, practicing with your client, 
I'm really big into role playing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard. People don't want to be offensive. Mm -hmm. And when somebody asks to pet your dog, you want to please them because people are naturally pleasers. We don't want to be like, no, you can't touch my dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and because nobody likes that confrontation to say, uh, you know, maybe not today. She's in training and we're working some things out. So now it's just not a good time. So yeah. you're not saying never, but you're you're not necessarily saying no. Yeah. No, yeah. You know, so it just gives you that flexibility to be a little bit more diplomatic about it. And then the other thing, like you mentioned, you don't teach them sit. When I have a fearful dog, I don't require them to sit at all. Yeah. Because if somebody does invade that special, that spatial pressure, I don't want my dog to feel like, oh my gosh, I have to, to growl or bite now because I can't break my command. Right. So I give them that flexibility to step behind me or to evade a hand that maybe I didn't see at that moment because I was saying no to this person. Now this person can't, you know? So there's just so much that goes on to have a dog that's insecure needs control. They need to know that they can protect yeah. themselves without having to be aggressive. And yeah. that's that evasive maneuvering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dang, I lost my thought right now. And before you ever start doing this, yeah. the dog must trust that person. Yeah. And most dogs that I find that are fearful trust their humans not to hurt them, but not to lead them into yes. dangerous yes. situations. They know you love them, mm -hmm. but they don't know you can lead them. Right. right, right. So that needs to be really, and people's feelings get a little hurt, mm -hmm. and you have to be careful about how you explain it mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I just say like uh, if their kid was afraid around around clowns or like uh, oh, clowns. or Disney Jeez. or the Disney character or something or just like Those are scary things. it's just like it's just like I'm not it's like yeah I'm, you don't want the clown coming up to their face and it's like your dog your dog I mean kid is gonna be screaming the hell out of you so it's just like but actually parents do this to kids all the time they do. because I was a shy kid yeah and my parents would be like oh give your grandma a hug like, or go sit on grandma. Santa Claus lap or the, yeah. the ginormous exactly. terrifying Easter bunny that I don't exactly. know why they still have. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. terrifying. Of this my record. experience with Chuck E. Cheese's. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I saw the giant rat and I right. head under the table. Right. <laughs> and we yeah. kind of like, I mean, I got over it, obviously, but you know. There's better ways to do it. There might, there yeah. might be, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not, I always yeah. tell people, because um, I think how you say it makes them feel more empowered to I, control their dog, whereas if you make them feel like a failure, like mm -hmm. I can't do this, um, is that they know you love them. You've got that part rock solid, that you've done a great job yeah. there. But as far as the leadership, you haven't spoke dog. Yeah. And so he hasn't understand a word you've been saying, and so he thinks he needs to say this, and you're not listening to him, and you're saying this, and he's not listening to you. Yeah. And that's where I'm going to bridge that gap. Yeah. So again, they have that confidence of, okay, I'm really good at loving. <laughs> I yeah. can now work on the leading. Yeah, Ro yeah like uh, Robin, what's her name? From McFarland. McFarland. Mm -hmm. like, I love last year when she said, like, if, when you have people like that, or you... Personalities it, are so important. Yeah, it's like it change certain words. Like it would help. I would love it if you did mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. it's like, uh, yeah, that's awesome, awesome. And I'll tell you one other thing. Yeah. That. Uh, so even so, some dogs, at whatever stage you're at, might not be ready to have a stranger even come stand next mm -hmm. to them yeah. Yeah. or like in food, a proximity of them. Not even no. So I mean, you've got to read that individual dog like. It may it might be the dog being here and a guy being like at the front of the property. Right. And like, totally ignoring the dog. Right. Not even looking in his direction. If you have to, you look over the dog, not at the dog or any part on the dog. Because eye contact to a dog that's already fearful means, oh my gosh, he knows I'm here, he's gonna do something right. to me, he's already seen me, what do I do? I can't hide now. But if you ignore him, the dog thinks, Oh, he's not He's not a threat to me. I don't really necessarily have to feel threatened by him. But as soon as that eye contact or that gesture is made, all eyes are on the dog, and they, right. it's like stage yeah. fright. It's like Everybody's spotlight. looking at me now. I can't take it. And as soon as the spotlight goes on, that makes a lot of people and dogs nervous. nervous. So yeah, the eyes are like spotlights mm -hmm. in, in that kind of scenario. Yeah, and I even even having the person not even like more so than just stand there, but have them like act like they're doing something if they're not like if they're playing on their phone or if their attention is very obviously directed on something that's not the dog that's less threatening yeah so like only go as close as the dog is telling you they're remotely comfortable with uh which i mean it could take several times of working on this before you, you get within 10 or 15 mm -hmm. feet of yeah. the dog depending on the how bad they are yeah but you're just you're looking for progress right mm -hmm. every time yeah. you work with the dog you're looking for progress any amount of progress if you make any amount of progress every time you work with the dog you're good like 
I, I think that's a lot better than, than trying to take big steps be and too fast doing because it. then when you regress, it's going to end up taking you longer yeah. and you might give the dog a, a different fear because, you, you know, or, we, lack we, of trust. or lack of trust, you're going to hurt that trust, which again is just going to make it, it's going to take more work and time to get to the space where they can be around people yeah. and not be here. Yeah, I tell I tell them too. It's like a, it's like rehearsal for like the ballerina show or mm -hmm. stuff. Is like you want to keep practicing practice, before the big practice, show. Practice. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. just go on stage and wing it. Yeah, no, don't like <laughs> don't don't like do one session with me or a console and then after I give you all that, I bring Thanksgiving 20, 20 yes. people over. I'm like, and holy that's crap. So important to tell yeah. them because sometimes that sometimes that happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they think, well, he's lot. ready. He's been doing so good. Yeah. yeah. And Per person too, you know, like some dogs like certain people better than others, so you need to watch your dog. And you know, before I ever take a dog across the street to meet my neighbor, I usually have them two weeks or so. Yeah. And then we're walking by and saying hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff. Yeah. So. Cool, cool. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It takes a lot of time. We have a dog at the rescue that is a known like severe abuse case because they went and picked the dog up and the lady was beating it with a broom mm. when we went to get it um, and he is distrustful people obviously Hi. <laughs> and it's interesting because usually I don't know if the dog what their path is but right. this dog we know Clearly. and a volunteer of ours actually saw it happen so mm -hmm. we know um, and that dog I actually am using uh, at adoption events, I use the volunteers as helpers mm -hmm. um, because they know just to go up, stand there. And so we're getting now, let's see, it's probably been a month that he's been there, so four times. And he's, we're able to come up and actually give him a right. treat, but he doesn't want to be touched yet. Yeah. So that's the kind of like low yeah. progression. Okay. okay, cool. I think, uh, and then you guys. More dogs like at your at your house or <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you foster like okay. Yeah, okay, I don't. Generally. I don't take in board and trains. So. I I know I know, but you know you'd still foster, which I I'm long term I'm, board and train. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because no, I'm doing it because like I'm helping out the rescue slash boarding place to, yeah. in exchange for using the social field for socials and yeah, stuff. So, awesome. um, I will admit, I when I have dogs at my place. I get pretty, I get pretty lazy, and I, because I'll spend like a few hours outside working with clients or doing stuff, mm -hmm. and when I come back, I just want to like. <sighs> mm -hmm. And I also too, I don't have, I don't have like a st structure when it comes to like coming back to my house, because I know, so I wanted to ask like, what are some routines you guys do for your dog? Yeah. And what are some yeah. ideas we could do for. I just we dogs. understand completely, Kevin. We have three kids. <laughs> we don't always feel like working either, or being parents, but we have to. Yeah. Uh, so I think you're knowing that your families that you work with feel the exact same way. Yeah. So making training as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate it. The things they need their dogs to do is to live in their lives. Yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, when we're pooped, we have the dogs come out and hold a place while we're watching TV. They're learning. We're watching TV, maybe during commercial breaks we might throw some distractions out there and work mm -hmm. some stuff, but keeping it easy, um, you know, we also have endless distractions, yeah. so, you know, we don't do this day one after several days of building a relationship and then hearing our kids, seeing them from afar, and then we're having them in the same room, like, we'll have the dogs hold a place as we all eat dinner. Mm. And again, it's still something that we can moderately control, the dog's learning a lot. My kid's like, you know, I'm good, uh, what was it? Casper, the ghost, like they're eating and all the food's just falling to the floor. That's how oh. my kids eat. They have like these ginormous holes in their chin. All the food goes to the floor. So those dogs have a lot of willpower to stay on that place okay. while we're going through dinner. So making it easy, you know, generalizing when you need rest, how can you get that rest that you need, but also make that dog emotionally stimulated yeah. to help them, you know, progress as well. So okay. kind of cheating, cheating, right? I like to joke I'm a lazy, I'm an efficient dog trainer. Um, Real world situation. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, and I always feel like if, if your dog can listen at my house, I know they're going to listen at your house. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get much crazier than that. Um, but we do a lot of things like the kids are outside playing.
they know that they're not allowed to approach dogs that even that are here at our house to train unless we ask them individually first. So you know, our kids are playing and we'll work that dog from afar. Um, and that could be me reading a book and then holding a loose leash mm -hmm. around me. Or it could be settle the dog and I'm now sitting on their tether and the kids are across the yard and I'm laying in the hammock um, waiting for them to finally relax. You know, it's just little things. It doesn't have to be complicated, but those little milestones, yeah. like actually settling on their own without me telling them to when my kids are playing from afar, that's a huge life success for that dog. Okay. Um, to know that they can shut, shut off their mind to relax on their own without somebody having to tell them when to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have... I mean, we'll have a couple, and it depends on the dog's, like, threshold and for, personality. Yeah, for personality for how long we'll do a training session. Because yeah. some dogs, they can go for 30 or 40 minutes strong, and they're good. Like, you've got a German Shepherd. There's one German Shepherd that, that we trained, and we dog sit every once in a while. Yeah. And he'll just, like, his reward is to do more. Yeah. So, like, you could just work him forever, and he's always, uh -huh. like, he's got he, the drive He was board. trained in protection after he did our training. Oh, so he's, he's no. He's he working is. bloodline. But oh, that's gosh. his reward. He's unique, though. But Nobody else is Most like dogs, like, 5 to 15 minutes, maybe maybe 20, 25 mm -hmm. minutes, and, and, you know, just get them out, like, in the morning when you potty them, work them for what their threshold is, mm -hmm. like, don't work them until they're getting floppy, right. but work them mm -hmm. so you can get some repetitions and teach some new behaviors. Mm -hmm. Let them have some rest so that they can absorb yeah. that information. And then, you know, because I don't necessarily get the dogs out at this exact same time every day. Mm -hmm. It's got to kind of fit into our schedule. Mm -hmm. So, um, And for some dogs, we try not to get them out between, you know, the hours that mom and dad might be at work all day from 8 to 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's not any housebreaking issues... I don't want that dog to feel like he's going to get all this attention at our house and then go home and not. Mm -hmm. So we try to we try to replicate that as much as possible. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we just we fit the training sessions in to what our schedule looks like that day. Uh, so you know, obviously, like in the morning and at night, um, and then whatever else fits. But then there's a lot of times, like she said, that it's just being with us. And then mm -hmm. doing like a duration command because yeah. that is so that does so much for the dog. Um, um, with the yeah. with the small session, do you individual or all the dogs together? Very rarely do we do all the dogs. Um, we don't like to mingle dogs. Okay. Um, I'm I'm a mom. I'm a worry ward. I know what can go wrong. Um, so generally we don't. But our dogs are usually present, and that's because I I know my dogs. I trust my dogs. Yeah. Um, so we do that, and if we do have multiple dogs present, we have the um, we have like fish eye hooks and that are attached to our walls to have them on their place command, okay, so that so I know that yeah. dog is trying to hold this, it is successfully holding this place. But if it breaks, I know there's going to be that that pullback, and this dog will be safe too. Okay. So um, having safety precautions when you have dogs coming in and out a lot for sure can definitely be um, hard. And then don't feel guilty about that soak time in the crate. Because that right. five or ten, you know, five, fifteen, twenty minute training session, they're gonna need an hour or more of rest. And that's when they're truly learning, not when you're teaching them. Their brain's working too hard to really understand what's going on. When they're sleeping and their brain organizes those thoughts, just like with us, we wake up the next morning, they wake up from their nap and like, Hey guys, I got it when that session might have looked super sloppy and you're like, Oh no, this didn't go well. So don't be hard on yourself either for le allowing that soak time in the brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because like, um, I'm moving to a different house that I have more space. I actually have my own room. Nice. Before it was a uh, one bed studio. This is my uh, this is my desk. Here's the dog crate. Here's the bed. Here's uh -huh. the kitchen. Uh -huh. And then literally the dogs are like right here. Yeah, no, so, no peace. No, no peace. Mm -hmm. And I always feel bad. It's like okay, go play. And then I was like, okay. I'm starting to implement it now, but it's just like, I was like, oh, you dogs are driving me nuts. Right. And then, of course, dogs mastered the abuse, neglected look very well. So if they can see you in their crate, they're just automatically looking so pitiful and sorrowful. And how could you leave? I, I can't. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but it's nice to give them a quiet room so that yeah. they really can process too because that would be hard to process yeah, in yeah. that room where yeah. you might be getting up to go to the bathroom or having to you know, do a call or something and the dog's like, but what's going on? Wait, what's going yeah. on? So, yeah. No, that'll just be really cover great. the crate too. Mm -hmm. Cover the crate, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. We take the plate cuts sometimes and even lean them up in front mm -hmm. of the crate as a little barrier too. Yeah. So. 
um, for dogs like to pull things into the crate. If you feel like they're watching you. Yes. <laughs> the little beady eyes are always watching. Yeah. But, yeah, be brief, be bright, and be done. Yeah, because I'm still figuring out. I'm still figuring out my theory because I know everyone has like their own thing. I know they have their structure. Like, like I like walking in the morning, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. group walk, then I come back, and then that's usually the time I leave for my clients or my consult. Mm -hmm. So then they're resting, then I come back. I let them out mm -hmm. bathroom yeah. and then we can do something else. And you can use potty time as training time. Okay. So go out and do their potty, do a little distraction work, and go back inside before they get overwhelmed. Okay. Okay. Multitask. Mom skills. Yeah. <laughs> okay, tether, small sessions, and place. Okay. And then, like, yeah, because I, I want to do a nice balance of work, rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of play, because sometimes, like, my board is trying to make a little play. Play is super mind. important. Yeah. Not just for them to let loose, but to build relationships. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and with the play, um, like, sometimes if I've got to do, like, office work, like, I'll sit in the training center and the dogs can just run around and play. Yeah. And I might, you know, throw a toy, or if they'll play by themselves, they can just play by themselves. Mm -hmm. So, I can supervise, you know, with my peripherals, you know. There's only um, one dog at a time. One dog's out. Um, or I'm gonna let them all loose and just supervise with her. Right, right. Um, and, and that's, that's obviously a dog. Find out how many dogs are in your. Can you get in your peripherals? <laughs> that's obviously a dog that don't have like housebreaking destruction issues. Like right. that's either yeah. a bed or not. Yeah, supervision. We really um, do that, but yeah, I mean, playtime. Playtime can just be any time that you can supervise. So yeah. I would add one thought if you're doing long term, because I do long term, you know, Foster, the dogs yeah. are usually with me for three months. Mm -hmm. So I have time to kind of draw things out a little bit. But I've noticed that my dogs will not play with the new dog for maybe yes. two to two days to two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I've kind of followed their lead on that to tell me when that new dog is being accepted into the pack. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to play with that dog beforehand because to me, they need to be accepted into the pack yeah, first. Yeah, the, the first residents that were and there. And since I'm a human, I rely on my dogs to kind of tell me. So, like I would never take a dog in for, well, I won't say never, rarely mm -hmm. take a dog in and play with it right away. Okay. However, there have been exceptions to that where I've kind of engaged in some like maybe digging or some kind of activity with the dog mm -hmm. so but it wasn't like outright play and plus most of them aren't going to play with me at first anyway yeah. they're like Ugh. right those first few days too scared so. our, our relationship building session which yeah. is also our play sessions is just sitting on the floor and doing nothing yeah maybe checking in on my phone reading a book and yeah. depending on the dog for like very fearful submissive dogs i sit on the floor um for other dogs i'll just sit in like the office chair mm -hmm. or something okay. but um, that again, that presence without me acknowledging them. Okay. I'm not talking to them. I'm not reaching for them. I'm not chasing them. By saying, them, come with me. By themselves. Huh? By themselves, like when you do that, the, or no other dogs. Everyone, with other dogs. No okay. other dogs. No other dogs. No. When they first come in, because yeah. they just the came to my house. Building. Now they smell my dogs. They smell my kids. They probably hear my kids because they're like a stampede. So I try to not make my stimulus be anything other okay. than still, with minor movements, obviously. Um, okay. But again, the dog can explore me at its own pace. Some dogs come right up and are trying to climb in my lap, and I'm like, oh, we're going to have fun. Okay. And then there are other dogs that's like maybe laying on, hopefully laying, maybe standing across the room, kind of just watching me as they sniff around and watching me. So okay. I know that dog's going to take some more time before we play or Let do a them lot of engagement. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, reading that dog at first. And your dogs. Um, when they get there, I mean, it took us a while before I trusted my own dogs with yeah. board and trained dogs, and that's okay. Yeah. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, better safe um, than sorry. So when, when we finally got to that point, our dogs tell us exactly what we're working with, and that's a beautiful thing to have. Yeah, that's how I feel, because like Nova, she'll certain individuals, like she'll, she'll play, play bow, mm -hmm. hump, which I have to not nip that in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> But then there's some dogs, like, you know, particularly males, the, the big idiot males, that they think they're a puppy, but they're like 80 pounds or something. Mm. Yeah. And she, they'll just go over her, like, say, hello, and then she's like, ears back, and she's like, no, they quiet, like, no. And then I try to, like, vouch for her, like, hey, mm -hmm. give her space. Yeah, yeah. And then occasionally 
when I'm not looking. She's like, Ugh, and they get so butthurt, and I'm just like, what's it? He's like, okay, you certain individuals you respond to, that tells me something. Yeah. Like they have no sense of boundaries or something. Most dogs don't know social cues because the only experience is maybe a very irrational dog park where there was bully dogs yeah. or as a puppy they were encouraged to go up and throw themselves in another dog or person's face. So those aren't always innate skills. Sometimes they have to be retaught. So having a sound dog that you trust, like my Mastiff, I could, I know I, she, from the most fearful dog to even the most cocky dogs, Morgan can balance her energy to fit them. Mm -hmm. My schnauzer, my miniature schnauzer, never could. He's very cocky. He's 20 pounds, and he can take the world on blind. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> him, we, we hardly ever put him with boarding trained dogs yeah. unless we really know they're going to be good to him because he really is the lowest of the totem poles. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, no, I mean, Nova has her issues, too, but, you know, she's, she has her favorites. Okay. She has the dog. She's like, oh, great, you're back. Mm -hmm. um, and you know she's she was dog reactive, you know. And my my best thing would be instead of me me at the house, bring the dog to her territory. We'll go out the place that I do social events, mm -hmm. meet them, and then I'll bring That's them home. That's a great. Yep, we did something similar to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I know the foster, foster. Like there's one, there's one I. I'm gonna be taking after I move in, and nah, yeah. he he he's an he's an ass. Mm. Like, <laughs> like he just you he he would he lived with a homeless guy, and huh. they brought they took him, and ever since in the kennel, uh, no they they put him out in a yard by himself. Uh -huh. Whenever someone with a leash goes in to grab, he's like very stocky, like pointing towards the person as they're going through the door. I have a video I definitely get, want to show you guys. Oh, I'll put it on the IACP since I think it'll be interesting. Okay. So he'll just like get into that lion stance. Are they walking toward him and facing him? Yeah, they're like, like this is the run. And then the doors, doors right here. And he'll like point to wherever they're coming from. But when they come in, they, he doesn't like lunge or so he'll just get excited, but man, when you bring out that leash, and it's because they don't wait, they don't wait to calm him down. I, I definitely saw that. Yeah. But man, he just goes, ah, leash, leash, leash. Mm -hmm. Then we brought him in a more kennel situation. Like he's in group now, so he's more enriched. Mm -hmm. But now it's like every time he comes out, every time they open the kennel and they they allow, they let the dogs run to the door to the yards, he'll see any leash. And he's just like, leash, cut. Okay, I'm gonna grab it and go outside, go to the door. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they'll pull. He'll, people have the dogs. So he's the on leash. a leash, but he still bites the leash to pull them? In the new setting that he's in right now, mm -hmm. they'll let him run from the, run, the kennel run to the door, because it's like right there. So he's off leash? He's off leash. Okay. But I'm he'll sorry. find a leash that. hanging okay, on the neck. Of a person? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll try to grab that or whatever leash that he first sees mm -hmm. and runs mm -hmm. so he's like he's in that he's quite an ass so i just like okay I'm so is it uh, hmm. is it fray drive or is it fear or is it it's no it's not, fear. Video. it's not fear i don't think it's fear mm -hmm. he's oh, well, there then that won't be so hard yeah right <laughs> yeah I, he's I told, afraid of the leash it'll be harder to fix no like with me and uh with me and there was this other person in uh to know where I was from, he she does sees his way too. He knows who not to mess up with. Okay. It's a certain individual too, but mm -hmm. you know, I, it almost sounds like a power play mm -hmm. because the leash is kind of our segue to control a dog yeah. at first, and so I think exactly. he's very smart and knows that. And he says, yeah. "Suckers," <laughs> and he yeah. takes your control for me. Yeah, and he know, and he knows like who not to mess with. Yeah, and he'll know. Okay, mm -hmm. this one I. Mm -hmm. And he might have been. So I had a puppy who was really scared of a leash. Yeah. Um, and he was found as a stray, so again, like... Leash is a foreign thing to I them. don't know, well, I don't know if maybe people would try to catch him with a leash or mm -hmm. something. You know how people will do with yeah. with dogs, like, um, but he wouldn't grab it, but he was really scared of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why I was asking if it was fear or, 
or what. So no, I do. I work with him weekly. Yeah. Until I have the day that I take him home, which might be soon. And it could be something. I mean, we really don't know the dog's history, but it could be something as subtle as like maybe when that leash was put on him for a while, it was like roughly grabbing the collar, roughly attaching yeah, the leash, and a lot know, of severe right? body language to associate this negative association with the leash. But regardless, like I, I always tell my families I work with. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. All that happens is how we take care of the future. Mm -hmm. Have you so. ever tested his prey drive with a toy or something? Uh, I ha I haven't, but he'll see something like moving, mm -hmm. like a motorcycle or a bike, and he'll he'll go and run for that mm -hmm. uh, you know, ball. He's he likes to be, play tennis ball. Because the leash is moving too. Yeah. I never know. I and probably too because he's been not in a house situation, so it's like I, I'd be interested to see what. Don't excuse bad behavior because they're I in a shelter. Uh, so some of the best behaved dogs I've seen were from homeless people because that's kind of yeah. that survival, okay. survive or die personality, and they get into that pack yeah. very fast. But just because they're in a shelter does not excuse them grabbing a leash mm -hmm. because there's many dogs that are in shelters that will not do that. Yeah. yeah. So you have to. Consider that because she's right about they know that's how you control them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys okay? You guys tired? You guys good? I just I just doing a little stretch. Okay. How about you? <laughs> One Julie? more question. One more question? Okay, okay. <laughs> and we have ten percent, so I think that's perfect. Oh uh, no question. Otherwise I'm gonna be uh like stretching my <laughs> brain limit at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I need uh? so time. <laughs> I need great time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll have you guys choose which one. Okay. Because I'm stuck between two. Okay. Uh, some ideas they're working with like elderly, elderly people that have like pup, that get puppies. Oh jeez. Or, or I, <laughs> that's you know I said that already. I blame I the husband. I have and, the same struggles. So yeah. What's the next one? Uh, gener like generalized like behaviors in certain breeds. Like you know how a lot of people say it's not the breed, it's mm -hmm. the human, or don't use the breed as an excuse. Mm -hmm. But there's some, but like there's genetics and stuff. Mm -hmm. People say it's like it's in their genes. It's like oh, it's some Malinois. It's, them, they, amalgamate. Amalgamate. they do that all the time, so it, it's still confusing to say, like, someone's like, oh, is it because he's a German Shepherd? And they're a hot mess, it's like... So, I'll quickly answer both of them. For the the people that don't have as much physical control over rowdy puppies, and I'm sure they probably got a large breed puppy, like a Lab or a Shepherd, um, for me, the, the easiest is a remote trainer because okay. you can control them from a button. Okay. And those older people can get easily knocked down, can get easily injured, and if they're not taking the dog back, you have to do what is going to be safest for them mm -hmm. and the dog. Okay. So that's kind of my go-to for them because it just helps bridge that. that sh they don't need strength to overpower you that dog. You can communicate okay. with just the push yeah. of your button. Um, so that that's my for that, and then for and that's generally. So there's always there's always those <laughs> weird situations where you find something else. Exceptions to every rule. For the um, what was the other one? The, just the breed and the. Okay, I, I love Caesar's whole point of a dog is a dog regardless of its breed. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter that an Australian Shepherd was born to herd. Hurting children is not okay. Yeah. So you can control those innate behaviors. Yeah. They're just a naughty behavior at yeah. that point. Could you give it an outlet to take it out on? Absolutely. Can everybody do that? No. So we have to adapt to try to make it as what's best for that family. Mm -hmm. So that's my quick response. You didn't get to choose, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Harry I mean, didn't either. Yeah, I mean, I agree with both those things. I know, I wish I was. Yeah, I wish. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I think you're my husband. totally <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah. I wish older people would adopt dogs that are a little older or smaller or smaller I agree. Um, and if they do get a puppy they need to think 15 years ahead and what is going to happen to that dog mm -hmm. if perhaps they can't take care of it yeah you know do they have help around the house or will their children take it or something like that so yeah. the plan ahead um, we get a lot of dogs in rescue because people die yeah so um, but uh, breed it helps me with one piece of the puzzle, but it isn't the whole right. puzzle.
puzzle. Exactly. Okay. Which yep. is, yeah. Is a puzzle. You know, I take it into consideration. Mm -hmm. For example, coon hounds behave differently than border collies yes. in general. I suppose there might be a coon hound that herds sheep somewhere. Right. There's always those irregulars that you're right. like, that's not natural, yeah. but okay. <laughs> you know, but if I'm working with a coon hound, I kind of like, okay, they're, you know, driven by scent and yeah. they're kind of aloof towards people sometimes. And, you know, they're not made to work for people like a border collie. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. You know. Okay. But I won't hold that dog to a, I won't um, hold it my coon hound to a lesser standard. Right. Yeah. Right. But I might have to acknowledge that the training is not going yes. to progress as quickly. Or it needs to be a different way. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yes. good point. Good point. Yes. A good so. pit bull any day. Of course. Easier. Right? Yeah. Easier to train. I'll love you if you listen. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so even if a breed has specific, if generally a breed has specific tendencies or behaviors, like those behaviors can still be modified. Yeah. But you may go about it a different way for very different breeds. Yeah. Easier yeah, for you. Right. <laughs> I know, because I have so many German Shepherds like at my place, and it's like people ask me, I'm so sorry. I say, it's okay, this is like the 20th German Shepherd I've worked with in the year. And then just. It won't and, stop. And people just say, I have dog trainers up, up, up there that I hang out with. And they say, oh, of course, it's a German Shepherd. I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. And just, so it's just like. Knowledge here, knowledge here, and just like uh, trying to make it work. Yeah. Well, just by saying, of course, it's a German Shepherd, is not making an excuse for that behavior. Yeah, it's like it's just yeah, saying yeah. that's why that behavior is there, and it's not necessarily there in a Chihuahua because they were bred for specific tasks, for specific jobs. So, yeah, like certain ethnicities. Right. Are so that doesn't good excuse it. Yeah. It just says. Well, yep. the breeding in that breed has gone astray. Mm -hmm. Breeding has gone and astray too. We see a lot. I see unstable German Shepherds mm -hmm. yeah. a lot, and I oh, know wow. they didn't used to be that mm -hmm. way. But I haven't been training dogs long enough. Yeah. Oh no, I I, I think I'm training your share too. So I'm just like <laughs> I'm just like yeah, too much. Yeah. Like yeah. I had a, a foster failure with a German Shepherd, and he got out of my place. Like we got a vineyard, and uh -huh. he ventured off with a he ventured off and. Went out to the public road with. Oh, he's, <laughs> well, he, he bit it. He he bit it for. He charged out a small dog with a couple. Oh. The husband tried to stop it, but mm -hmm. dog bit. Yeah. Dog bit him, and so I was just like, a lot happened that day. Went through that, and you know, in that small neighborhood, they knew my landlord who lived like next to me. They asked me to vacate the whole yeah. vacate. So, I was, well, they asked me nicely. They, they gave me a lot of time to find a place, yeah. but I was just like. This was literally, I think, two weeks ago, two weeks before the conference, or? Oh, geez, I was yeah. just like, ah, oh. I was that dog's one, help, one last hope, but, you know, it's just like, it, it was bound to happen with someone, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, that's and that's, uh, that's a hard reality, it's a tough pill to swallow when you realize that dog trainers aren't perfect. Yeah. We make mistakes, too. We are, we are people, we are humans. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah, rehab reality, like, with Heather, <laughs> like, I saw that YouTube video, I was just like, yeah. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. For sure. Is there only two people? Yeah, it's okay. They ah. they can watch the replay. <laughs> but oh, yeah. was there any questions? Yeah, it tells you. It tells you oh, like there's three, three now. Was there any questions on there? Looks like there's some comments. I can't read them though. Was it? Oh. Okay. It's sideways. Hi Julie. <laughs> That's it. Oh, it's sideways. I'm sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> but uh yeah, I think that I think that was awesome. I lo I love doing that. Yeah. Well, the, thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think That's I'll great. end here. I'll tell you the okay. story about the elderly okay. people.